Alright, you guys are back in the engine room. Got a bunch of new hose to replace all this old bilge pump hose. It's a little stiff and it's an integral system. It's very important that the bilge pumps works and nothing fails. We're also gonna make some changes to the system. There's actually two check valves in this line, in this bilge pump and the one just in front of it right there. So two bilge pump systems with two check valves. I think this is a check valve. I've never seen anything like this, but it's bronze. It looks like it's a check valve and this sure is. But the reason that people put check valves in a bilge system is because like, look at, look at this line, one inch diameter, you got like a seven foot run. And what happens is if the bilge pump goes off, then all the water flows out. And then as soon as the bilge pump turns off, all that water that's in the line still flows right back into the bilge. So this is probably a half a gallon in this line, seven foot run, one inch diameter. That's a good amount of water. So people, you know, they all put a check valve like close to the bilge pump. That way when the bilge pump turns off, all that water won't flow directly back into the bilge. Another reason too is especially where our through holes are for the bilge pump exit, they're just above the water line, but right at the water line. So you could potentially get a big wave or anything like the boat could just roll and that side of the, the boat is underwater for a minute, seconds, puts all that water pressure against th that through hole and just can funnel right through that line and probably slowly put some water into your bilge. I think I got a solution that addresses everything, both those issues, and I'll show you as we complete it. But first, I'm gonna run some new line through here. Tight fittings through these bulkheads and like just this cabinet thing. Kind of a pain to get the old one out. Hopefully the new one goes in a little bit easier. So I got our whole bilge system worked out. As you guys can see, I started adding some lights down here. So we actually have some real lights. So one thing I forgot to say before, why I do not want any check valves in the main bilge system is because these are the main like primary big bilge pumps. If we need them to work, we can't have any opportunity for anything to be clogged up in those lines. Anytime there's a check valve in there, it's just an opportunity. It's just an obstruction where things can get clogged and jammed and um, just little pieces of dirt or hair or whatever could potentially clog up that check valve. And then when you really need that bilge pump, it might not work. It might just be clogged. So basically now we have a free flowing bilge pump. It goes from the big bilges all the way up through this line, through the anti-siphon valve, and then down and out the seacock right here. And we address the problem of like any sort of wave pressurizing against this hole or anything, say water for whatever reason, say we heal over a little bit or we get a wave against this hole. If water did pressurize this and come up through this line and down here and started flowing into the bilge, this is an anti-siphon loop. So as soon as the water started doing that and then it released the pressure from this side, there's a little rubber valve in here that would allow air to go into here and it would not siphon water, it would not continue to siphon water from here all the way down into our bilge. And our last problem of why people do put check valves in their bilge pump lines to prevent water from like back flowing back into the bilge, look what I have for that. So this right here is our main bilge pump with the bilge pump line that we saw that goes all the way to the anti-siphon loop. Um, it's manual float switch there. What I installed is a small diaphragm pump and this pump is connected to a little 12 volt timer. So it goes off three times a day, 7 a.m., noon, and then 7 p.m. for two minutes at a time. Because it's a diaphragm pump, it doesn't matter if it runs dry, it's not gonna break the pump. So it just continuously pumps for two minutes, whether there it's pumping water or not. And it just pumps whatever I have in this little tube right here with holes in the bottom and a little screen on it. Any water that's in the bilge is just gonna pump out and it's gonna pump right into our shower sump and then the shower sump pump's gonna pump it overboard. There's just not enough uh, power in this little pump to pump it up to the through holes uh, above the water line. So our shower sump pump does the big work of doing that. And we have a check valve in this line because honestly, it doesn't matter if this pump fails, like all we're gonna have is a little bit of water in the bilge. And if we get too much water in the bilge, the big 
uh, float switch will go up and the big bilge pump will go off. That's when it really matters. That's what really needs to work. So I think we addressed all the issues and excuse the bilge for being a little bit dirty. It's not oil or anything. It's just dirt. It's just dirty bilge. Oh, I gotta clean up a little because there is crap in here that could clog that line. It could clog this pump still. Whatever. All right. Bye. Right. Bye. I hope that makes sense for you guys. We're finally installing all our through holes today. We got some new ones, but we're using some other ones that look just perfectly fine. So we're just dry fitting them all, and then we'll take them apart and put some boat life on it as a sealant. Good? I can't hear you. All right, uh, which one? I'll just stick one up there. So this is this one here. You good? Huh? Now I want to screw this one all the way in to make sure that we don't bottom out. We're not going to bottom out the threads. All right. It's tight, right? All right. We're going to have to uh, cut that one a bit. All right. So we dry fitted all through holes. I only, I have to cut one, one of these new ones that I got. Just marked it here. We'll thread the collar on because it's bottoming out in the seacock. We won't use this collar, it just comes with it. But we'll thread it on so that we can cut it off here, and then we'll unthread it, and that way this helps make sure the threads stay, kind of help re-thread it on its way off. And then it won't bottom out in the seacock, so we'll get a nice tight fitting. And then I also, before we install them all at the rest permanently, I undid all the ones below the waterline. And before we st install those permanently, I just got to paint a little barrier coat because I sanded them down a bit. Just paint a little epoxy on there, just get a little barrier coat going on the bare fiberglass. Once that cures, we'll be good to go. Go ahead, unscrew it, or I'll unscrew it. You're ready, right, Sierra? Yeah. Sierra. Sorry. I'm coming. I can't hear you. Chill out. Shouldn't it be super clean in there? On your side? Like in the hole. Um, it is. No, it's not. It's covered in blue, like, dust. I can see it move around. You want to blow it out? Okay, that's good. Put a little sealant on here. Some people use life caulk, some people use 4200, some people use 5200 below the water line. We have some 4200 already opened and handy, so we'll use this. Although, I drill it out because it's clogged. <laughs> All right, we'll probably just use this for the two through holes above the water line and switch to some new life caulk that we have. So I don't have to do this. Got a fancy little through hole wrench. Ready, Sierra? So now so, I screw it on? Yeah, go ahead, screw it on. So I should screw it on? Yeah, go ahead, screw it on. How you doing? How tight does it need to be? As tight as you can. I feel like there should have been like caulk like oozing out right? of here. How's it feel? I'm still working on it. Can't hear you. You gotta talk louder. How you doing? I'm working on it! Okay. Heard you that time. How do you know it's not gonna start like squeezing the wall? What? Take the stupid screw out! What? How do you know I'm not making it too tight, it's gonna like compress the wall? You'd be able to see it, it's really thick glass. But, I mean, is it pretty dang tight? Is, like, is it pretty tight? Yeah, but it can still kind of move what? the wrench. 
you can still kind of move it. Yeah. Um, go a little bit more. Okay. All right, wiggle it around, see if it wiggles. Seems pretty good to me, what about you? All right, we got all our through holes in. Just a disclaimer, you guys. I'm not an expert. Look it up, do your research. I think this is the best way for us. There might be a better way, there might be a different way. This'll be perfectly fine for our boat. But I'm not an expert. gonna clean off all the running gear. We're gonna try to get all of this growth, these oysters and whatever paint was on the props and everything, gonna try to strip that all down. We'll probably still use this in the end, but we're gonna start off with, I've never used it before, muriatic acid. I believe this is what's in a lot of like other hole cleaners and stuff like this, but this is just the concentrated, strictly muriatic acid. So supposedly we can brush this on the running gear and it'll dissolve all of the oysters and a lot of that growth that's on there. Then maybe we'll scrape them a little bit and then maybe we'll hit it all with a little strip disc just to get it all nice and clean. And then we'll paint everything. That's the mission for today. For me at least, Sierra's standing on the inside of the boat right now. Let's get my gloves on. I have some eye protection on. So we don't touch this acid with our bare skin. I don't get in my eyes. And I just got this stuff at Home Depot. All right, just pour a little bit in here. I don't know how much we'll need. Just got a cheap throwaway brush from Home Depot. Let's go paint this on. Is it worth it to do that acid? I don't know because it definitely cleaned up the metal like where it was just like a thin layer of whatever but it definitely doesn't take off the big oysters and stuff. Like as soon as, you know, the acid hits it, it seems like it dissolves a little and then neutralizes and then you need more fresh acid to really get that stuff off. But maybe it helps loosen it up so we could scrape it easier. The prop definitely cleaned up a bit but I'm gonna have to hit pretty much everything with the strip disc anyway. I don't know, maybe it helped. I guess we'll do the same thing on the other side. Scrape it real quick and then hit it with the strip disc. And we'll be ready to paint. Like definitely cleaned up a lot of this metal with not the big chunks of growth on it. Look at that prop. I don't know if you can see how pink it is. Compared to that one. There's a life I lead in this city Hurry and to cut my teeth I can take what I need to get by Doesn't make it easy The other piece of my heart is so full Somewhere in this great unknown When I return from the afterglow Will you carry me like I am home again? Back where I've been home. I want it all. I had a feeling, but the feeling is 
After grinding out all the blisters, rinsing them out really well with fresh water, and letting them dry for a few months, it's time to finally fair them. So I fair them with Total Boots two-part fairing compound, we'll let it cure, and then the next day we sanded it all down to a nice smooth hull. The last thing we did before we painted the bottom of the boat was spot barrier coated all the blisters with a two-part epoxy primer. From there, it was time to tape off the waterline and get ready to paint the bottom. Today is a huge day. Today is the day where we're going to see like one of the biggest transformations happen. I know these videos seem like they're coming out pretty fast, once a week or twice a week. This is taking much longer than that. And we've been looking at our bottom, sanded and spotted and just disgusting for months now. And today is a day that we get to paint it. It's going to be like the biggest transformation from the outside because we've been looking at that, like it's eye level. It's the thing we look at most on the boat when we're like walking around and so we're finally going to be able to look at a freshly painted bottom and I'm super excited about that. Does it make that big of a difference when you look at it in the water but when it's on the hard that is the first thing your eyes see so paint the bottom. Ooh, we're excited. That was a long day. That's a lot of surface area to paint. How much paint did that take? Two, two and a half gallons. It went further than I thought it would. I thought we have four gallons. I thought it would use all four for sure. We have, uh, yeah, some in one can. I don't know if we'll do it right before we get put in the water. We have to get under these stands. So we got a little bit of paint in that can left for that stuff. And then I think we got a full another can. So I don't know what we're gonna do with that thing. It's looking so good. What do you guys think? All right, wait, what time is it now? Removal. That's right. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Next time on Tool is on the Summer, the back deck gets a facelift.